If you genetically alter human embryos and gestate them into living babies, you're violating a large number of moral, ethical, and legal boundaries, and you'll cause a huge international controversy that will probably destroy your career. This is what Chinese professor He Jinhui is experiencing firsthand, right now, after his gene modification experiment produced two newborn girls, twins named Nana and Lulu. But despite this controversy, researchers in the field are calling for lucid and rational thinking to appreciate the reality of gene editing technology. At the Hong Kong Summit on Gene Editing that happened uh, last Wednesday, the Harvard Stem Cell Researcher and Medical School Dean, Dr. George Daly, said, quote, The fact that it is possible that the first instance of human germline editing came forward as a misstep should in no way lead us to stick our heads in the sand. It's time to start outlining what an actual pathway for clinical translation would be, unquote. There's a legal and ethical debate over germline editing, and for good reason. To edit the germline means to edit embryos, whose DNA will go on to exist in every cell of the resultant human, should that embryo be carried to term. It also means any edit that's made to the sperm or egg gametes, which would combine to create an embryo with a full set of chromosomes. To genetically edit any of these things will modify the germline, which means that whatever modifications you make will be passed on to future generations, and they could possibly spread throughout the human gene pool. Dr. Daly reinforced his point by saying, quote, It's absolutely clear this is a transformative scientific technology with the power for great medical use, unquote. He's actually authored a list of genes that he thinks would be acceptable to edit, because they would prevent genetic diseases or offer protection from other diseases without their deletion or their, uh, their being knocked out having any major negative consequences on the organism as a whole. The CCR5 gene was one of the genes on his list, which is the same gene that Hu Jinkui used in his experiment. Another gene on the list is APOE, which brings me to the news that I want to talk about today. The APOE gene is not causally linked to Alzheimer's, but there is a very strong association between APOE and Alzheimer's. There are different APOE alleles, with varying levels of associated risk. But theoretically, if someone were to inherit two copies of the high-risk APOE allele, that would bump up their lifetime risk of developing Alzheimer's to about 60%, which is really high. Harvard researchers Werner Neuhauser and Dennis Vaughn are planning to edit sperm cells to knock out the APOE gene. Their experiment, however, will be much safer and much more limited than Jin Kuei's. This experiment won't involve using the sperm to fertilize an egg. They're not trying to make a live baby. On top of this, they're not using the sloppy CRISPR-Cas9 technology to remove an entire gene. Instead, they're using a CRISPR variant that just operates on single base pairs at a time, so there's much less risk for big chunks of the genome to be accidentally deleted. Neuhauser and Vaughn are going to use this to edit sperm cells. Specifically, they're going to change a single guanine base into an adenosine base, which turns the high-risk APOE allele into a low-risk allele, and this effectively neutralizes the risk of developing Alzheimer's. The general idea behind this research is to develop safe and reliable mechanisms for gene editing so that when this stuff makes it out of the lab and into clinics and the personal lives of everyday people, we know it's going to be safe and reliable, and deliver the expected results. I say when, and not if, because Jin Kuei has already opened the door. He's already let the cat out of the bag. As his fellow Chinese scientist said, he has opened Pandora's box. So what do you think about this? Is this kind of limited research acceptable? I tend to think that it is. After all, they aren't fertilizing the gametes to make an embryo. They aren't doing anything with embryos here. And even if they were, they aren't trying to make a live baby. So to me, the ethical concerns here are pretty minimal. As Mr. Neuhauser said, quote, For treating or preventing disease, pretty much everyone agrees, unquote. He's saying that pretty much everyone agrees that it's a good thing and that we should do it. 
But cosmetic editing, like to change your eye color or to make your kid taller, is pretty universally frowned upon. But he says that someone is inevitably going to cross these boundaries, just as Ha Jin Kui did. Newhauser said, quote, Like any technology, there will be misuses. But it's important that we return to a rational approach, recognizing that this has huge potential and huge risks. The problem is that when people get scared, things get shut down. This is why people are nervous about Hue. He's hurting everyone else. Unquote. So what does the future for human gene editing hold? For a long time, I thought that the world's researchers would generally abide by the standards of not messing with the germline. I thought that there would be a degree of, I don't know, social responsibility. But now, I kind of think that that was a naive perspective, and I'm really not sure anymore what the future might hold. What do you think about this technology and where we're headed? Are we on the road to Gattaca, or are we on the road to stifling this research out of mortal disgust? Or, and this is most probable, are we somewhere in between?